According to basic laws of aviation, bees can't fly because of their small wings and fat body, but they fly anyway. Because bees don't care what humans think. But if the humans mess with them, the bees won't be set back. Barry B. Benson is a young bee living his life happily in a natural hive. Today's his big day. He's finally going to graduate. After dressing up, he waves goodbye to his parents and meets up with his best friend, Adam Flayman. On their way to the ceremony, they recall how they spent their student life. Three days in preschool, three days in high school, and three days in college. That's what it takes to graduate in a hive, but days are like years for a bee. After a short ceremony, the graduated bees are taken on a tour of Honex Industries, the place where they will spend the rest of their lives. The industry consists of different parts, and each bee working there is responsible for a specific task in making honey. They also work on their defense against humans while they go out to collect nectar. All the fresh graduates need to pick up their preferred job post, and they're excited about that. Except for Barry. He's not ready to choose a single thing to do for his whole life. He tries to explain it to Adam, but no other bees are brave enough to think differently. Their conversation is interrupted by the entry of pollen jocks. They are the bee army responsible for collecting nectar. Barry gets really impressed by the pollen jocks as they get to visit the whole world outside. Seeing his interest, one of the pollen jocks promises to take Barry for a ride soon. Later that night, Barry keeps thinking of his career. He shares his curiosity with his father, but just like many parents, his father wants Barry to follow in his steps and become a honey steerer. Barry tries to put his point, but it's useless trying to change the traditional pattern. The next morning, they go back to Honex and line up in front of the job placement board. The positions are limited as all the graduated bees have only one place to work in. However, Adam got his desired post as a working bee has died recently. Barry can't adjust the system. He doesn't want to die working as an average bee. He gets out of the line and sneaks away to see the pollen jocks. They're about to take their flight. They recognize Barry and invite him to join them. He must be careful and follow the ultimate bee law. No talking to humans. As they fly out of the hive, Barry sees the sky for the first time in his life. They fly through the kites, under the bridge, and ride to the flower fields. The pollen jocks collect the nectar and perform the pollination while Barry is seeing all this with amusement. Afterward, they fly high to detect more flowers. A bunch of daisies comes into their sight, but they turn out to be tennis balls. Being new, Barry doesn't realize the danger and accidentally gets stuck on a ball. The young girl picks up the ball and starts playing. Barry is screaming for mercy. His life is at stake. Suddenly, the girl's boyfriend plays a wrong move and Barry is kicked out of the playground. He lands inside a car's engine and can't find the way out. The driver turns on the air conditioner and Barry is sucked out into the car sitting area. All the passengers start to panic. They try to hit Barry and spray him with insecticide. The poor bee runs out of the window for his life. But his misery doesn't end here. It has started raining. Bees can't fly under the rain. Barry looks around for shelter and enters an apartment through an open window. It belongs to the tennis players Barry encountered earlier. He decides to find a safer place, but the window is closed. Barry mistakes the ceiling lamp for the sun and falls into the nacho chips. The guests start to panic upon seeing him and try to hit him. Fortunately, Barry is saved by the girl. She's a kind lady who values the life of every creature. She takes Barry outside the window, but he can't leave right now. He must thank her for saving his life. He gets back in the house and flies to the kitchen. He gathers up courage and starts speaking. The girl can't believe her ears. She's talking to a bee. Though it was a strange meeting, the girl is kind enough to offer a cup of tea. They sit down near the balcony and get to know each other. The girl's name is Vanessa Bloom. She's also struggling with her career life like Barry. She wants to become a florist, but her parents don't agree to that. Having common thoughts helps them get along well. The night is setting in, and Barry has to go back to the hive, but he will not be able to get Vanessa out of his mind. After returning home, Barry tells Adam about the outside world, and also about meeting a girl. Adam warns him not to chase a wasp, his parents won't agree to their relationship. But he totally loses his mind after knowing that Barry fell for a human. That's totally impossible. Barry has to think like a bee. His parents also want him to choose a career and start working like a normal bee. However, it's too late for doing anything. Barry is badly fallen in love with Vanessa. He's already dreaming of their romantic date. The next day, Barry risks his life again to meet Vanessa. She takes him to a flower shop where she wants to work. Afterward, they go to a grocery store. But Barry's worst nightmare is waiting there. The shelves are full of honey bottles. He can't believe their food is being sold here under different brand names. It takes their life to make it. Barry is losing his temper. He wants to get to the bottom of this. He sneaks into a honey company and fights a man to get further information. The man tells him about the honey field and that he can get there by following the company's truck. Barry gets on his way there. He tags along a cyclist's bag and jumps to the truck's window. There he meets many other insects. After escaping the wipers, he sits down to share his problems with a mosquito. Soon, he reaches the farm and discovers a nerve-wracking reality. Bees are living in fake hives and their honey is being stolen by humans. There's not just one hive, there are hundreds of them. 
Barry captures some pictures and takes them back to his hive. Regardless of the difficult circumstances, he's ready to sue the humans. The story spread all around the Bee News. Meanwhile, Vanessa is also ready to help him in filing a case. They submit their request and within just a few days, the court trial starts. Barry is representing the Bee Company, while the Bee Companies are being represented by the creepy lawyer named Leighton T. Montgomery. Leighton states how he holds all the rights to use nature for the benefit. He also claims Barry is a hologram or a robot. In defense, Barry calls all the required witnesses. The first one is a company owner who makes the bee do the labor for free while paying his other employees. Barry's next guest is the musician Sting. He's using bee terminology without their permission. The last one is the actor Ray Liotta, whose face is being displayed in honey bottles while he didn't play any part in the manufacturing process. Barry's statements were strong, and he had a great first trial day. Vanessa decides to celebrate with a delicious dinner. However, they're disturbed by Ken's sudden entrance. He sits down at the dining table and Vanessa goes to heat food for him. Meanwhile, Ken decides to have a chat with Barry. He doesn't seem to like bees much. Barry doesn't like him back either and makes fun of his so-called skills. Ken gets angry and drops down his spoon. While picking it up, he hits his head and gets angrier. Barry excuses himself to use the restroom, but Ken follows him there. He rolls up a magazine and decides to kill Barry right there. He sprays at the little bee and even tries to burn him. In the mess, Barry trips himself and falls into the toilet. The evil Ken presses the flush. Barry grabs the nail filer from nearby and starts surfing in the toilet. Ken tries to hit him again, but Vanessa comes over. They start arguing and decide to break up. Vanessa is not sad at all. She wants to have a peaceful life without toxic people like Ken. The next morning is the second day trial. Lane has read through all the books on bees and comes prepared. He calls Barry to the stand and starts questioning his relationship with Vanessa. Then he calls him adopted as all the bees are given birth by the queen so they can't have individual parents. Adam can't stand his community being humiliated like that. As Layton planned, Adam gets triggered and stings Layton. The cunning lawyer overreacts and blames bees for being insensitive and dangerous. Barry takes Adam to the hospital. He feels weak after the stinging. They were trying to figure out a new move when they noticed a few humans smoking outside the window. This reminds Barry of the smokers that are used on the bees. He goes out to bring evidence and requests Adam to buy some time in court. Layton tries to use this as a chance to force the judge into stating the decision. Luckily, Barry makes it back in time and brings a smoker into the courtroom. Layton calls it harmless, but accidentally activates the device. Its smoke makes all the bees suffer and Layton is caught red-handed. The media and the jury get on the bees' side and claim justice. The judge gives the decision in their favor and Barry is happier than ever. Before leaving, Layton warns the bees of the food chain interruption this decision can cause. Barry doesn't take him seriously and starts working on his mission. He shuts down all the honey farms and frees the bees. He also takes the packaged honey off the shelves. All the beauty products containing honey are banned too. Humans can't even use honey as a sweetener. All the honey is collected in a huge tank and supplied to the hives. The bees run out of storage tanks. They just got so much honey that they don't need to make any more. And for the first time in history, honey production is shut down. All the bees leave their work and go home to rest. The pollen jocks are called back too. Without pollination, the flowers start to vanish. Vanessa's floral business also shuts down due to a lack of flowers. Meanwhile, Barry is unaware of what he has done. But Adam has realized the mistake. The bees have nothing left to do. They have more honey than they need. He always dreamed of being a part of honey production, but it's shut down now. Barry goes out to talk to Vanessa. She takes him to the balcony where all the plants are dying. These aren't all of it. All the fields and forests have withered down too. Not only the flowers, but the fruits also can't grow without pollination either. It's all Barry's fault, and also Vanessa's. They didn't think through their decisions enough. Before the flowers finish off from the world, Vanessa wants to see the flower parade tournament being held abroad. As she rides away in a taxi, Barry's hit upon with a brilliant idea. He wants to correct his mistakes. The flower parade will have a lot of bloom flowers, so it's a good source of pollen. Barry wants to steal a bunch of flowers and bring them back to his city. Then the bees will spread the pollen to restore the plantation. As they planned, Vanessa and Barry sneak into the parade. They choose a suitable flower float and drive it away. Afterward, they got on a plane to reach back as soon as possible so the flowers can stay fresh. Unfortunately, due to unfavorable weather conditions, the plane has to slow down. Barry decides to talk to the pilots about it, but they start to panic on seeing a bee in the cabin. In this chaos, the emergency button gets pressed and releases the airbags. Both of the pilots fall unconscious. There's no one to control the plane. Vanessa connects to the control room and they ask if there's anyone with flying experience and Barry presents himself. He believes that a plane is just like a giant metal bee. However, this flight is not going to be as easy as they're heading towards the thunderstorm. The news is all over the human and bees news channels. Everyone is looking forward to the landing. The control room doesn't trust bees and believes that they don't even deserve to fly with their unproportional bodies. This statement makes Barry angry. He says that bees are a major part of society. Each bee may be doing a small job, but these small efforts make a huge difference. 
His touching speech has motivated all the bees in their coming over to help. They need to hurry, as the plane's autopilot system has stopped working too. Don't worry, the pawn jocks are coming to the rescue. They spread under the plane and hold it up. Barry trusts his family and turns off the engine. He guides Vanessa so she can land the plane in place. The rest of the bees gathered at the airport to make a flower sign at the landing spot. All the media is covering this historical moment of a plane flying like an insect and landing safely. This is not the end. The flowers Barry brought are the last hope to fix the ecosystem. It's time for the bees to do the bees job. Barry is also given a pollen jock uniform and he's up to his work of collecting pollen. Afterward, they head to the city and sprinkle pollen on every plant in sight. They fly around the fields and everything starts to bloom again, and the honey production too. A few days have passed since then, Barry has joined the business with Vanessa. Now they sell flowers and honey together. Besides that, Barry also works as a legal advisor for the animals in need, and of course, above all that, he's a pollen jock doing what a bee does. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like and comment. Thank you.